We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Mapping report and case studies of AI for children in China. We are at the Communication University of China, joined by dozens of students and faculties. Thank you for your participation. Also a big warm welcome to participants joining us from all parts of the world. My name is Su Wenying. I am the moderator of this event, also a member of this research project. We also have Associate Professor Mr. Yan Ming from Communication University of China as our online moderator. First, let me give you a brief introduction of the report we are launching today. This mapping report and the case collection was conducted by China Federation of Internet Societies and the Communication University of China with great support from UNICEF China. With comprehensive desk review of relevant national policies and international practices, we also conducted uh, a review on academic findings and uh, conducted field visits as well as interviews with academic institutions, tech companies, and social organizations. The report delved into the application of AI in every aspect of Chinese children's lives, including playing, learning, socializing, and exercising. And we collected 39 key studies to showcase how AI has been impacting chi child rights and well being, and how it can be further steered towards a more child centered ethical approach. As we are running on a tight schedule, without further ado, let me give the floor to two distinguished guests representing the two organizers of this event. First, let us welcome the Secretary General of China Federation of Internet Societies, Ms. Zhao Hui, to deliver the opening remark. Ladies and gentlemen, Good morning and good evening. Although the pandemic prevented us from meeting face to face in Poland, the internet enables us to get together in hybrid way. First of all, on behalf of the organizer of the event, China Federation of Internet Societies here in after CFIS, I'd like to extend my warm welcome to all the guests, both present and online. Thank you for your participation in the 2021 UN Internet Governance Forum and your attention to the AI for Children lunches and awards session. China has always attached great importance to the internet protection of minors. The revised edition of law on the protection of minors, which was officially put into effect on June the 1st, 2021, included a particular chapter on internet protection. The chapter specified the concept of internet protection and the responsibilities of relevant companies. It also standardized online environment management, online information management, and the anti-addiction to the internet, aiming at protecting teenagers from harmful online information and addictions. CFIS is a national, joint, and the pivotal nonprofit social organizations formed by domestic social organizations and the related institutions in the field of network security and the informatization in China. 
Since its founding in 2018, CFIS has been placing great emphasis on the healthy growth of children in cyberspace and has been committed to safeguarding internet security and the rights for children. For example, CFIS calls on all sectors of society to pay attention to children's internet protection by organizing meetings and the issue proposals. To strengthen children's online literacy education and protect children's right to access the internet, CFIS opened online literacy education classes, promoted digital literacy into schools, and hosted several relevant seminars with UNICEF at IGF. Another example, workshops themed by tackling cyberbullying on children with digital literacy and the right to play, online gaming and the child rights. CFIS, UNICEF, and the Communication University of China established a project team to further strengthen children protection and explore how to empower child, ch children in the current new era featured with science and the technology. Based on the policy guidance on AI for children published by UNICEF in September 2020, the project team carried out field research, case collection, and opinion facilitation. Eventually, we finished the AI for children. The re report on AI applications targeted at children, which was officially published in the Chinese mainland. We have invited the person in charge of several typical cases in the report to the event to share their experience with you. I hope that by showcasing the achievements of China's AI for Children project and the sharing of experience, we can encourage countries to focus on children's internet protection, strengthen exchanges and the cooperation, deeply explore the application and the practice of AI technology in child protection, and provide suggestions for healthy development of children in cyberspace. I'd like to put forward two proposals. First, we should exchange experience and explore the unlimited possibilities of AI in child protection. I hope that we can have deep discussion on how to apply AI technology and the products to the education of children. We should address issues concerning child education, such as the digital gap in education, education for the disabled and the vulnerable groups. By researching and developing education resources based on AI technology. Meanwhile, we should strengthen technical exchanges at home and abroad, pull resources and forces worldwide to the AI for children field. Second, we should explore cooperation mechanisms for AI for children by giving full play to the role of CFIS. Nowadays, countries, societies, and the family worldwide are paying more attention to and investing more in children's health and well being. It will become more and more important to support and assist children's health, education, and the entertainment using AI technology. To help all parties carry out in-depth cooperation, we will actively serve as a bridge, coordinate and communicate with the government, universities, research institutions, companies, and NGOs. CFIS will advocate and promote the introduction of AI technology standards to protect the rights of minors. CFIS will also strive to create platforms for international exchange and the mechanisms for cooperation in children protection and make those 
a critical support for the compl complementary and the common development of the international community in cyberspace. At last, I wish the event a great success. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Ms. Zhao, for this um, very inspirational speech. Next to the floor is the Vice President of the Communication University of China, Mr. Duan Peng. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. For foreign friends attending online, good morning or good evening. I'm very pleased to participate in this online meeting of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum. First of all, please allow me to represent Communication University of China, or CUC, one of the organizers of this conference and also the location of the online offline venue to warmly welcome all experts and scholars for your attendance. Thank you for your attention to the topic of AI for children. With the rapid development of the internet, the wave of AI and the information networking has swept the world. By December 2020, Medicine in China had uh, outnumbered 989 million, 21% of which are adolescents and uh, students. Taking the largest uh, proportion, the pop popularity of the internet has enabled children more access to reach out to AI technology and further use it. AI technology not only brings great convenience to children's education, health, and uh, entertainment with the rapid development, but also arose people's concern for privacy protection and uh, fairness. CUC has always valued to the integration of discipline construction related to AI, technological progress and the social responsibility and has deep academic accumulation in intellig intelligent media network. A number of AI technology related research centers have also been established, including state key laboratory of the media convergence and the communication, key laboratory of intelligent media of the Ministry of Education, intelligent radio and television engineer Research Center of the Ministry of Education, key laboratory of the audio viral technology and intelligent country system of the Ministry of Culture and the Tourism. In addition, the School of Information and Communication Engineering has set up AI as a measure to cultivate compound senior talents for AI related scientific research design and the development and the integrate application in fields such as information, culture, radio, and the television and the media industries. On the strength of the in inherent academic and the social research advantages of the AI technology, at the invention of the CFIS and the UNICEF, one of the scientific research team from CUC joined the AI for Children Project Group. As a key member, our team conducted in-depth research on the application of AI for children and formed a detailed research report. The report analysis exciting places and the regulations of the world's major economics and present the advantage of the various intelligent technologies in application for sorting out typical AI application case in China. The reports is to have a very positive results in promoting healthy development of AI technology in children and help the people for different backgrounds and friends correctly 
under, understand the advantages and the disadvantages of relevant technologies. I hope that through the exchanges in this meeting, we can all get inspiration uh, inspiration for the application of AI technology for children and further contribute to the development and application of AI technology in the children related fields. At the end, I would like to thank all experts and the scholars for your time and participation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duanpeng, for your warm welcome and the thorough introduction. Um, we all agree that the digital environment is becoming increasingly important across most aspects of children's lives. And this trend is exacerbated by COVID-19. Today, we notice that the digital platforms, products, and services has been increasingly immersed in children's lives. And digital you know, our sector and especially those big technology companies are playing an increasingly crucial role in shaping policies, um, changing behaviors and setting industry standards. So we are very happy to have two representatives from the tech industry to share with us their thoughts and practices in applying AI in child-related products and services. First, we have Mr. Wang Xuwen, Head of Solution Architect, Education Sector from Alibaba Group. And he will share with us how Alibaba is using AI and computing power in um, children's physical education. Xuwen, so, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon. My name is Wang Xuwen from Alibaba Group. It is a great honor to be here sharing with you our exploration in artificial intelligence applications for children. In recent years, with the emergence of new technologies such as mobile internet, big data, AI, and wearable devices, educational concepts, methods, and skills have been greatly changed. And this trend we also have a profound influence on physical education. In past 20 years, Alibaba has made great efforts in technological innovation and become the growth engine of China's digital economy. By leveraging cloud computing platform, we have opened up our advanced technologies to the whole society, helped all the industries, including education, to achieve digital transformation. From the beginning of this year, a series of policies concerning physical fitness for young people have been issued by our government. And therefore, the whole society has paid great, great attention to physical education. I would like to take this opportunity to show you how we use new technologies to empower sports education from a traditional mode that relies on experience to a smart mode driven by data. Schools are the places to make children get prepared for all the challenges before graduation. The purpose of education for children is not, is not to achieve great scores, but to improve their overall competency. The goal of physical education is to help children improve their physical fitness, not simply to improve the performance of competitive sports. From this point of view, we found that physical education provided by traditional schools may have many disadvantages. First of all, traditional PE classes evaluate students by their sports scores, but it is difficult to measure the real effect of students' exercise. Without effective data for reference, individual training progress cannot be traced and the achievements of those PE lessons cannot be analyzed. Secondly, traditional PE classes are not able to provide customized training plans for each student in accordance to individual situation. Each student may have different physical foundation, athletic talent, and even different physical conditions from time to time. 
ignoring individual differences and targeting the same goal may cause some children fail to achieve the effect of exercise while others always fail to reach the target, both of which are not good exper experiences for children. Thirdly, traditional physical education cannot keep a long run track for children's health. Without monitoring, recording, and tracking students' physical signs properly, long-term personal health profile could not be established and traced. On the other hand, lacking of continuous and complete tracking data, teachers cannot improve their teaching skills. Last but not least, sports injuries occasionally occur in traditional sports classes caused by improper training arrangements. Teachers estimate students' exercising load according to their personal ex experience rather than real-time tracking data. Even sometimes, teachers do not understand the health risk factors of students in the class, such as heart diseases and etc. In case there is an incident, it is difficult for teachers to understand the situation in time, nor can they take immediate actions. Alibaba Cloud is now using our cloud computing, big data, and other technologies to carry out in-depth cooperation with the education industry to explore the use of artificial intelligence to empower sports education for children. We have created a smart sports learning and management system, which is now have been applied in many schools in China. We focus on the following aspects, leveraging our digital, leveraging our digital technologies. Number one, real-time sports data monitoring and collection. Wearable devices can collect the physical signs of students in real time and send data to the cloud through the IoT communication channels for continuous monitoring. Number two, AI-assisted uh, measurement. Using smart devices and visual AI technologies, multiple students can be measured at the same time in physical examinations. As the measurement results are automatically recognized by AI, time and efforts are saved in class. Number three, data model-driven training suggestions. With the help of data models and algorithms, Teachers can easily make personalized training plans for each student. Number four, early warning of sports risks. Under continuous data monitoring, once there's an incident, the, student, the system can send alerts to teachers and parents as soon as possible so that timely action could be taken to avoid potential injuries. Number five, long-term health profile. Each student, will have his own health profile, including warnings on sports risks, such as heart diseases. So here, privately related data is only visible for authorized person. The data generated during exercise will also continuously accumulated along in the physical health profile for long-term storage. Once launched, our program has attracted greater attention of many in, uh, educational institutions. After a period of application, we have received some positive results. Here, I would like to use two real cases to illustrate. The first case is about a school that uses our solution to monitor students' physical signs during PE classes through auto recognition of physical exam performances. Equipped with smart skipping ropes and ultrasonic height and weight measuring devices, the school can measure multiple students at the same time for one minute rope skipping, sitting forward bending, sit-ups, and other sports items. The system automatically counts the results and generates the reports. Artificial intelligence reduces huge amount of repetitive work for teachers. The efficiency of classroom physical examination has increased by more than five times. The second case is about a school using our solution to manage health risks in physical education. The school equipped each student with a heart rate armband to continuously monitor their physical signs, such as heart rate during their sports training. In a class, a student's heart rate exceeded the threshold value for several times, and the system issued an early warning to the teacher in real time. 
The teacher noticed that the student had a risk tag in system, which indicates that his heart rate was generally higher than the class average in the past. So the teacher rearranged his training plan, let me have a rest and recorded this issue in his health profile. Above all, Alibaba is committed to become an enterprise that truly creates value for the society. To better serve public welfare, Alibaba Group will keep using artificial intelligence and other technologies to empower physical education, to improve physical fitness for young people and the whole society. Thank you very much. Thank you for this very clear, um, you know, um, introduction and feel like it's really a learning experience for me. And uh, next we have uh, Mr. Wang Xiang from Tencent Security Product uh, Director. And uh, um, we all know that Tencent is a huge you know, technology company and uh, hosts a big um, user base of young people, including children. And Tencent has been exploring many options and technology tools to um, better the rights and well-being of children. Um, and Wang Xiang will share with us one of the um, a few key studies is focusing on online security of children. So please, the floor is yours. OK, thank you. Thank you. And good, good afternoon, everyone. And good morning to those online friends. I'm Xiang Wang from Tencent Security. It's my great honor to be here to share my, our achievements around AI for children. My topic is using AI to promote content safety for children. Tencent as the leading internet technology company in China. We treasure our core culture of value for user, tech for good. We endeavor to build new technology to, prom to mo promote the quality of human beings' life through diversified internet services. Well, in recent years, we witnessed several outrageous sex abuses cases of children happening in the cyber world. You may hear not just one happening in Korea. 16 children were sexually abused in live broadcast and the audiences are 260,000 paying members. The youngest victim is even only 11 years old. And the audiences include professors, sports stars, actors, etc. And many well-known internet applications were used to spread the video and the broadcast. And according to statistics, we found other varying vital points. The first one is the later you were born, the sooner you served the internet. Currently, we have 175 75 million internet users under 14 years old. And 46% of the children have encountered various cybersecurity incidents in 2019. And the incidents are mainly due to inappropriate content such as pornography, bloody, violent content, etc. We couldn't help wondering why is the problem of content in a cyber world so intense? What leads to criminal behavior? We found out two reasons. The first one is that fast information exchange is the core nature of internet facility. It's easy to distribute content to millions of people in a short time. And safety countermeasures are not enough to address the inappropriate content, especially when in the information explosion era, which makes it more difficult to identify inappropriate content. So the underground industry certainly takes advantages of internet facilities. And the second is that the safety awareness towards internet content of both adults and children is far from enough. In an anxious incident I mentioned above, some paying members even argue that it's the children's fault for taking part in the live broadcast. Children are victims, but even to be blamed. And the children involved in the incident don't know what their future will be like. They just wanted to make fast money. What a terrifying discovery. As one of the primary internet service providers, we have absolute obligations and responsibilities to promote content safety for children. We launched the God for Children campaign dedicated to promoting content safety for children by AI. We carried out our work in three aspects. The first one is we prepare healthy mindset of parents and children. The second is we recommend high quality content to children. 
The third one is we reduce inappropriate content to children. Firstly, safety education for both children and their parents. Since 2017, we have actively cooperated with their national anti-pornography and anti-illegal work office to improve teenagers' online security awareness. In 2017, our online security classroom was first launched in Guangdong and stretched to 17 provinces and cities. In 2018, the classes went online and the video covered 10 million school students nationwide through the safety education platform we built. At the same time, the central part of teaching was extended to school teachers. We trained 62 teachers. After the training, the teachers spontaneously organized another 5,000 security courses. In 2019, we focused on an accurate security education of left behind children in 50 major villages in 12 provinces. From 2020 till now, we launched a three-party course on the protection of children and appealed to parents and school to pay attention to the teenagers' online security. Secondly, we provide good content for children to view. Little Penguin application is the children's version of Tencent Video which is committed to providing a safe and high quality learning environment for children. We design and create 5 million high quality videos for children. These contents are specially prepared to enhance children's vital ability like subject knowledge, common sense, EQ education, etc. They are high, highly recognized by the parents and can meet children's growth stage. And we distribute this contents precisely by AI to children with different characters. On the other hand, children's vision and hearing health are also parents' concern. The WHO points out that the children's vision is closely related to the usage of electronic devices with screen. We use AI to detect their watching posts, the time that I spend on our app, the contrast rate of the screen, et cetera. And AI inform parents of ch and children to take care of inappropriate usage. Lastly, we reduce inappropriate internet information to children. We use AI to detect and reduce two types of content. The first one is inappropriate content of children, like pornography of children, privacy breach, and bullying children. The second type is inappropriate content to children, like destructive behaviors, bad ACG, etc. To achieve the goal, we use various algorithms. We build core functions like, I, I can mention four types of function that we did huge invest in. The first one is the one picture multi-model detection. For all information showing on one picture, we have over 100 categories of detective algorithm to be able to address different and appropriate information in different scenarios. The second is, the soft pornography detection. We know that the appearance of pornography has changed from expli explicit to implicit, like some close up of the body. And the third one is the ACG content detection. ACG is famous and universal globally, but recent, recently ACG porn has been spreading fast. ACG contents are easy to take diversify manifest and we use machine learning to successfully address it. And the third, and the fourth one is that we can even have the content understanding technology. We know that sometimes a particular picture and text are not inappropriate, but their combination is not. We train AI to understand the deep meaning of the combination fully. Now we can detect more than 150 categories of inappropriate content that promote a safety of image, video, audio, and text. We also provide AI technology to help other companies to address the challenge crossing 11 industries. We process over 300 billion pieces of content every year and automatically detect over 500 million inappropriate pieces. At last, we're enthusiastic to have global cooperation to widen the application of protecting children. And we hope to discuss the standards of the protection. Tech for good, Tech for our children. We love to see all children's smiley faces. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Wang Xiang, uh, for this very um, 
interesting introduction. I'm no expert of AI technology, but I find the approach um, you know, uh, follows a very solid logic. First, we provide uh, awareness raising, you know, so children and their families have a, a good awareness of online security and safety. And then we provide good content for children online. And then we keep them from inappropriate and harmful contents. And uh, um, now we have this very uh, thoughtful uh, sharing uh, from internet companies. We all know that the regulatory environment is very important to promote child online protection. And we are here, uh, here with us is Ms. Chen Chen, Chief of Integrated Coordination Section from Cyberspace Administration of Chongqing, Rongchang District. And she will share with us her thoughts on this topic. Okay, thanks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good morning. I'd like to express my thanks to the sponsor of IGF 2021 application of artificial intelligence for children research report and case study launches and awards. Your invitation has offered me the chance to share with you the experience of Chongqing Longchang District in the field of artificial intelligence for children. Starting with the building of intelligent campus, Longchang District is steadily consolidating its in infrastructure for information-based education and pushing forward the systemic and organic integration of artificial intelligence with education teaching and learning. Firstly, we are stressing the platform building for the intelligent campus. A large number of in investments has been in the school's internet in infrastructure, including AR, VR labs, maker rooms, and robot rooms, remote in creative classrooms, and recording and broadcasting rooms are set up in schools and in towns. Schools in towns can share special lectures and famous teachers' classes, while live radio streaming, for example, the online virtual robot experimental teaching. The sharing of quality teaching resources among students in urban and rural areas can thus help to, thus help to, to, to promote the balanced development of education in the countryside and in the city. And secondly, we set up teachers' capability in artificial intelligence. The teachers are organized to participate in the training sections to, make, to promote their capabilities in programming and application of information technology. Utilizing interdisciplinary in regions, teachers of computers, science and technology, mathematics, humanity and society have come together to form a learning community and build up the teaching staff for artificial intelligence classes. The teachers are actively explore new ways of teaching via mock, spoke, recorded lesson and live lesson. To foreplay the school teaching resources and the students' interests, the Tangxiang Primary School has developed a school-based curriculum for artificial intelligence, which features robotics, programming, and error modeling. The school offers intelligence training classes, such as flying cup, creative configuration, and magic cube, which are both interactive and full of fun, are very popular among students. In the afternoon, from Tuesday to Friday, when the class is over, the students will spend one hour take part in the training section. The teachers offer students careful and patient instruction and accompany them in training to prove their thinking ability. And thirdly, we are developing students' interest in artificial intelligence. Experts in artificial intelligence Education are invited to the school to, to give lectures on popular science and popularize the knowledge of artificial intelligence. A smart robot, Little Noyer, is introduced into the school, 
which is capable of intelligent voice integration and touch screen selection. Experiencing programs are carried out on a regularity. The students can get some preliminary knowledge about artificial intelligence by talking with a robot and listening to the lectures on laws and case analysis presented by the robot. With the help of special courses, such as structure assembly, programming control, and origin, origin of equation, the students can use mobile applets to engage a simple explanation of artificial intelligence. In the process, they can get a clean idea of magic regulation, man machine interaction, and intelligence voice. They, they will have great interest in the artificial intelligence, and they will experience great improvement in hands-on, cooperative, and innovative ability. These courses are actively that help students to their fantastic ideas into reality. At the same time, provide them with stages to discover themselves and show off their talents. School activities such as the Culture Festival and Science and Technology Festival are organized for parents and for students to participate in the rich and colorful activities of artificial intelligence education. Smart education projects and prize winners, competition events are displayed during the activities. And on the spot, students will conduct the demo progress for the smart intelligence courses. These activities have been well accepted by the students and their parents. The students are organized to participate in the international and domestic competitions so that they can learn from the competitions and explain their horizons. In the World Education Robot Contest 2018 World Championship, which attracted nearly 10,000 contestants from more than 50 countries and regions, including America, Canada, and England. Contestants from Tangshan Primary School in Rongchang District made a clean whip of all prize in the building block, block, building block robot competition of a primary school section through their effort. Schools in Rongchang District have won more than 400 prizes in different competitions, such as the World Education Robot Competition and the National Young Science and Technology Invitation Competition. To follow our effort, we will actively explore and utilize the artificial intelligence to push forward a more civilized and well-regarded cyberspace. For example, the Longji Primary School have made use of promote teaching to offer young people network literacy and media literacy courses, carried out the network civilization activities and promote young people's network literacy. As participants in the cyberspace industry, we have only made a small step in the field of artificial intelligence for children. We will continue to rely on artificial intelligence to build and create friendly learning environment for school-aged children. We will continue our movement of innovation and exploration to make new contributions to the intellectualization of primary education in the west of China. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Chen Chen, um, giving us a uh, you know, um, big picture of how AI um, you know, applied in education in Western China. And uh, uh, last but not the least, uh, we have a distinguished guest from uh, UNICEF China. Um, we all know that UNICEF is, has been a long champion of child rights. And uh, in um, September 
September 2020, UNICEF published a draft policy guidance on AI for children, which is a global policy guide for government and private sector that contains practical recommendations and principles for child-centered AI and AI systems. And recently, last month, uh, UNICEF has revised the draft and uh, uh, published the policy guidance 2.0 on AI for children and listing nine requirements for um, AI applications on children related uh, products and uh, systems. So we are very um, eager to hear what uh, Dora um, has to say about how she thinks uh, you know, AI should be and could be applied uh, in children's lives and especially in China context. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm honored to provide the concluding remarks uh, to this event, which focuses on a very important topic, uh, artificial intelligence and children. AI systems are fundamentally changing the world and affecting present and future generations. Children are interacting all the time with AI technologies in different ways. They are in toys, virtual assistants, and video games. Algorithms provide recommendations to children on the, who they play with, who they connect with, what music they choose. Children's lives and well being are also indirectly impacted by automated decision making systems that determine issues as varied as welfare subsidies, quality of healthcare, education access, and et cetera. This impact has implications for all children, including those from developing countries who may be equally impacted by lost opportunities because of not being able to enjoy the benefits of AI systems. Today, we heard three examples from China using AI for children for different purposes. Alibaba Cloud using AI to promote sports learning and management while also guiding children and their teachers on how to avoid accidental injuries. Tencent Technology deploys the AI for the detection of inappropriate contacts and provides awareness raising on protection aiming at solving the problem of impaired development of education in Western China, Cyberspace Administration of Chongqing and Ronchang District, enhances teachers' awareness and skills and improves children's digital literacy and interest in AI. These practices confirm that AI is a force for innovation as it can enhance the well-being of children. Yet AI may also pose risk for children and their rights, such as to their privacy, safety, and security, if it is not well regulated or implemented. It is extremely important to continue reflecting on the specific needs of children, as well as the opportunity and risks that AIs generate. Although there is emerging research and policy guidance globally, little is centered on children on considering their unique stage of development and the benefits and risks associated to AIs. It is in this context that after the first version uh, of the, a the policy guidance for children and AIs that was released in September, 2020, CFIS has worked with UNICEF and the Communication University of China on al analyzing the status quo of the implementation of this guidance and on collecting case studies on the application of AIs for the well being of children in China. And we just heard some of these cases. Since China is one of the countries with most robust digital infrastructure, its contribution to develop lessons learned and examples on AIs for children is surely important to highlight. It is key to continue exploring how further research piloting of new practices, adjustment if needed of current ones, as well as dissemination of the existing one and exchanges can contribute not only to child well-being and child rights in the country, but also to the global innovation agenda on this front. For the journey, in addition to the research that we have presented today, we have some globally tested case studies, some other good practices from other parts of the world, 
And as mentioned, the new policy guidance on AIs and children that UNICEF launched in November with the government of Finland. The guideline highlights that AI policies and systems should aim to protect children, provide equitably for their needs and rights, and empower them to participate in AI development by contributing to the development and use of AI. Building on this foundation, we have nine requirements that the policy guidance has identified. Number one, support children's development and well-being as an overarching goal. Number two, ensure inclusion of and for children in the process. Number three, prioritize fairness and non-discrimination of children. Number four, protect children's data and privacy. Five, ensure safety for children. Six, provide transparency, explainability, and accountability for children. Seven, empower governments and business with knowledge of AI and children's rights. Eight, prepare children for present and future developments in AI. Nine, create an enabling environment. The existing research report the policy and the policy guidance can orient the development of specific standards or local guidance here in China can help uh, companies develop or adjust existing AIs, always keeping children at the center. Further research is welcome, as well as exchanges internally and globally of these good practices. UNICEF will be pleased to continue collaborating with all of you with CFIS, uh, the, tech, the AI technology industry to promote child center AI, enhance children's well-being and child rights, and to promote digital safety. Thank you for this opportunity, and we hope to continue working together. Thank you, Dora, for this thoughtful reflection and uh, uh, conclusion and, and commentary on, on you know, the previous introduced practices and also uh, you know, the nine requirements for child-centered AI and AI systems. And we are all looking forward to see how those nine requirements can be translated into uh, industry uh, uh, protocols, national policies, and the daily practices. And uh, things we have uh, still have some, you know, uh, time. And uh, uh, we also have some questions raised on the online platform. Um, you know, uh, so I'll just uh, um, choose a few questions to our speakers. Um, first one is directed towards uh, Mr. Wang Xiang. And uh, um, so the question is child protection, including child online protection, is an issue that requires multi-sector uh, cooperation and joint societal efforts. So for um, a leading technology company like Tencent, uh, we know that there are you know, tech for good initiatives and this sustainable uh, innovation for social values. So what are the um, original you know, um, intentions and considerations that uh, um, drives Tencent to this objective, like using um, AI and other technology to promote um, child well-being and child rights and other, um, you know, social values. Okay, okay. This is uh, quite a good question. Yeah, like for Tencent, yeah. Tencent, technology for good is, I think, is a must-have to practice social responsibility. And on the other hand, as the founder Pony Ma of Tencent said some time ago, yeah, driven by the technology for good, we are now facing a wave of cross-border innovation the main object of internet services has developed from user to industry and now has become the society and the trinity of them. Practicing tech for good is complementary to the growth of our country. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the uh, next question is for um, Mr. Wang Xuwen. Um, so the question is, um, um, 
you know, since students' sports data is uploaded to the cloud through the Internet of Things, what technological methods are there um, for Alibaba to ensure the security of students' privacy data? Okay, I'll take this question. Very good question. So, you know, uh, data security is always our first priority. In November this year, uh, the personal information protection law was implemented and making very clear regulations on protection of data collection, processing, and storage of citizens' personal information. In our solution, we adopted strict access management, encry encryption in data transmission and storage, audit, and tracing technologies to ensure that only authorized person can access the data. We also introduced privacy computing and other technologies um, to ensure the security of data in interaction and use to make data available but invisible. Thank you. Thank you, Xu Wen. Um, and we also have a, a question directed towards Dora. <laughs> Um, so in, you introduced this uh, uh, policy guidance on AI for children that is recently um, came out. And uh, um, we wonder if there's any uh, concrete plans of, you know, for UNICEF to implement or you know, help uh, governments or the industries to implement um, such policy guidance. Thank you. Yes, definitely there are plans to work with the industry to, to implement it. And uh, already uh, there are some case studies of companies across the world that have been analyzed in light of this policy guidance and they are considered as promising practices. And uh, uh, there, there is an invitation to continue looking at uh, these innovations uh, around the world, to look at them and analyze them in the light of uh, this policy guidance and use them and disseminate them as uh, promising practices to guide others. So uh, this means that there will be a thriving uh, environment globally that UNICEF will support to produce these good practices and disseminate them. And uh, this could also something that we could look into you know in the china context and see how can we look at some of these experiences in the light of the policy guidance and how can we disseminate more exchanges between companies here and in other parts of the world Over. yeah definitely i think uh, china with this uh, very uh, sophisticated uh, digital in infrastructure and uh, uh, you know very dynamic scenarios um there could be interesting practices from China that can be shared and introduced to the, uh, you know, to the whole world. And uh, um, so I'm, I'm sure the Chinese companies uh, such as Alibaba and Tencent will be glad to join forces. And, uh, <clears throat> so uh, that uh, uh, are the questions on, online. And uh, um, is there any questions from uh, this, uh, from um, on-site participants. No. Okay, <laughs> we are uh, nearly uh, near nearly the end of this event, and uh, um, I like uh, I am sure like and other participants uh, feel it's truly a learning ex experience. Uh, we hear a lot of uh, innovations, technology tools, and uh, uh, you know. Um, new applications in uh, education, in online, you know, content and entertainment. And it's really, um, you know, opened our eyes to how AI can shape children's lives and how we need uh, better policies and better industry standards to uh, fulfill that goal. And uh, this event is just a uh, beginning and uh, will open the door for many further uh, collaborations, consultations, and uh, uh, joint efforts from the policymakers, from the industry, from the academic institutions, and from the social organizations. And uh, um, thank you all for uh, participating in, in this event and also thank all the online participants. And uh, um, this 
concludes this sec session and uh, uh, we will see you uh, in IGF 2022. Thank you. Thank you.